clarity is what I've always loved about photography. Um, it's a, that certain realism that you can capture in an image. When I first started in photography, it was that ability to see things in great detail, that purity of the image. Uh, and that's why I switched from doing art to photography. I used to strive to get the clearest pictures possible by using uh, odd films like Kodak Technical Pan 25 ISO. Um, I used to shoot a lot with Kodachrome 25. That was on 35mm format cameras and then I progressed to medium format as my uh, career expanded into um, commercial photography and then onto large format 5x4. But it was always about that clarity and that real realism and that's what I love about photography today and I try to reproduce that and represent that in my work and my images. It's not difficult to take uh, a good picture of two beautiful women in uh, an alluring pose. The difficulty is in creating the mood and the atmosphere and what I tried to do with this picture was create that atmosphere by using a background that would bring those elements together because the background is what forms the layers in the image it's what gives it the depth and the scale and if you study the image you see all these little pockets of light uh, emanating out from different areas of the room onto the boardroom table uh, the shadows the strong shadows the way that I've lit it and this is the important thing because it's all of those components combined that uh, are what make the image work. It gives it that, that drama. And again, I'm not for putting lots of fancy Photoshop effects or Instagram style effects. I want that clarity of the image to come through. This was one of my favorite images from a project that we shot in Iceland last year. I wanted to create this surreal landscape and surreal scene with the model and the landscape juxtaposing each other. This sort of Raquel Welsh uh, type uh, scene of 10,000 years BC, that was kind of an inspiration for this shot. And we chose Iceland particularly because of these very dramatic barren landscapes in many places that look like another planet or look like the surface of the moon. And that's what inspired this shot. It was creating that element of this beautiful woman running away from something in fear in this alien landscape, um, but have her in this beautiful designer dress that would bring out the, the lighting and the colour and the vibrance juxtaposed against that incredibly dark and oppressive landscape. To achieve this shot, I used um, two para 88 lights on the right hand side highlighting the, the model so on my right and then one large para 222 on the left as, as the main light and you can see that light coming across the floor I left that light coming across the floor so that it almost looked like a search beam or a spotlight searchlight from something chasing her and then added in these alien tripods in the background in post in the final shot but other than the alien tripods, the shot is pretty much as it was taken. I like to get the shots as accurate as possible in camera. So the technique here was underexposing the ambient, the sky, the daylight by about one stop to bring in that cloud detail, bring in the sky detail, and then expose the model correctly um, using this beautiful light that you get from the Broncolor Paras. Um, working on location here, we had to use battery powered um, packs which were the move packs um, and they also give you this ability of very fast flash duration to freeze motion because the model was running and in motion here. This was a studio shot that was quite complex it was for a client shoot and it involved again this format of layers and building layers in a shot and whilst it looks like a, a, a location shoot or a scene shoot, we built all of this in the studio. And there was about seven or eight lights used in this photo shoot to create these pockets of light, little pockets that you can see on the corner of the fruit bowl and the edge of the unit that the fruit bowl's sitting on. Pocket of light on the edge of the mirror or the table next to the mirror, or a pocket of light just on the edge of the chaise longue. 
and all of these little detailed parts of light were added to add this atmosphere to the image to create this sort of vintage rouge sort of hotel theme and then a very theatrical lighting on the background using a large uh, Fresnel, uh, the fluter light, the Broncolor fluter, uh, to create this good, beautiful vignette coming around the image to draw your focus in on, onto the model and the seduction in, in the pose. And um, I think we accomplished it really well, the theme and mood of the shot um, and accomplishing that in a studio environment. The complexities of a shot like this are actually more about the planning and the research than it is about the image itself. To successfully achieve a picture like this, it's, it's all about pre-visualisation. It's about understanding what you want your image to be before you even take it. And I recced the location first and planned the shot, sketched the shot, and then when we arrived at the location, we knew what we wanted to achieve. But when we arrived here, the light was in the wrong position and we had to wait a long time for the light to move position because unfortunately we arrived late. But I didn't want to let the shot go, so we basically decided to sit it out. And we sat it out for about seven or eight hours until the light positioned into a, a better place. The complexities of this shot from a technical point of view was combining a, a long exposure which was about one or two seconds uh, to capture the flow of the waterfall and getting the model to stand still during the, the, the uh, flash exposure, which then kind of helped freezer uh, in the shot. And it was a very difficult shot for the model because of the amount of mist and water spray and the cold breeze. But it was knowing what we wanted to achieve and then aiming for that and shooting it to get the result. You don't tend to tackle these type of shots by just turning up randomly and starting shooting because you won't get very far with that approach. You need to have a really good game plan in mind and a pre-visualization um, so that that planning, preparation, pre-visualization pre is what comes together to make the final image. It's a simple studio shot. We used acrylic uh, white perspex on the floor to capture the reflection of the model on the floor. And then in post-production, all I've done is tilted the image at a slight angle just to add a little bit more dynamic to the shot because if I'd left it completely horizontal, I think it could have looked a little bit stagnant. And I like to add that dynamical motion and movement in my shot sometimes. So the pose combined with the angle uh, of the final crop is what helps the shot. The lighting was meant to look very angelic or heavenly where the bright white background is sort of spilling and flaring over the model just again to add that sense of allure that sense of seduction in the shot and then there was a slight fill light from the front from the front to just provide a little bit of detail in the shadows and the face uh, but the lighting from above was simply two strip soft boxes the bron color 130 by 20 uh, or sorry, 120 by 30 strip lights side by side, illuminating the top of the model. Very fast flash durations are what's required for this type of work. And again, the pre-visualization on this shot was creating this vibrant background, these vibrant colors. So I chose blue and yellow because they're opposite in the uh, spectrum and they'll create a great level of contrast. I illuminated those background panels, which were just simply large wooden boards that we painted with emulsion, illuminated those with a couple of soft boxes, and then illuminated the model with several para lights and used the uh, Scoro packs and a very fast flash duration to freeze the model as she was jumping.